<laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't want it on me. I see that. Oh my goodness. Glad I'm home. Yeah, I just, wow, I wore myself out again. <laughs> it really hurts. <laughs> I just took four ibuprofen. Whew, okay. Like an old man. <laughs> I probably sound like an old man. <laughs> you do. Oh, okay. Well, we're gonna talk about our chickens. <laughs> about our chickens. <laughs> the ones that are left. Yep. Actually, no, not the I ones that are left. I was gonna say, yeah, I was gonna say, you make it sound like we lost a ton and we didn't. We lost a lot. Babies. But yeah. Well, okay, let's tell the story. Yep. So. As you all know by now that since Nate's been updating, uh, since I was gone, Nate took a little bit of time away from the homestead and went back to Oregon for a, about five days or so. Mm -hmm. And while he was gone, everything was going fine. <laughs> Best as expected with me leading everything until probably the second to last day, I think. I noticed that there was some feathers and we had been seeing, I had been seeing hawks and things in the area and seeing the dogs chasing stuff away. So just thought kind of, we had some aerial predators. So I was moving around the decoys and things like that. And just noticed that the, the birds, they weren't um, necessarily roosting or nesting in the same areas. They were starting to lay eggs in different places. They weren't really kind of in sleeping where they usually do. And we had three broody hens, as you remember, Karen, Sage, and uh, Donna. And- Karen and Donna stayed together and they had 10 chicks. Correct. And Sage stopped watching her chicks. So we grabbed them and put them in the metal coop with the other farm babies that we had. And then Jenny had some itty bitty babies. Five. Yep. Five or four. Whoa. That's a. That's a wasp. Mm, that's something. a big old something something. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of them. Oh, fun. This could be an, this might be a dive bomb experience. Oh my goodness, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> They're not happy we're in their area. So, so we had still three mamas with babies and they were all, uh, Jenny was in her own little coop and then uh, uh, Donna and Karen were sharing a coop. And so the double decker, the double decker AV2 in versus Jenny was in the small little one, kind of the rabbit hutch one. And it was working out great. Didn't have any issues. Uh, then I realized uh, the next morning when I was feeding everyone, there was a significant amount of feathers, which of course always makes me really nervous. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't find all of the babies. Now, and the feathers were in and around the the coop. The double-decker coop mm -hmm. that Donna and Karen yep. stayed in with the, with the 10 chicks. And normally throughout the day, uh, note I'm working full-time at this point, and so I'm in meetings, I'm inside for the majority of the day, coming out and checking. And typically I get a really good head count in the evenings when I'm doing feeding, because that's usually when everyone comes, including the babies. Yeah. And one thing that I do with the chickens every single stop is I make sure I have head count. That's why everyone always laughs and says, Katie's the chicken maven because I'm always <laughs> making sure that we have who we're supposed to have, where they're supposed to be, yeah. and that everything's and, accounted and for. And I've started doing that just because, like. Yeah, it just makes it easier so then you're not stressing out and worrying like, oh, I'm, I'm down a chick or something. So I noticed in the morning I didn't see Donna and I didn't see the six babies that were with her, but since I saw all the feathers, I assumed maybe a hawk got one or two of her babies and she was off hiding somewhere, is what I thought in the morning. And then, which was unfortunate, but it happens and that was the risk we knew we were taking by letting the moms raise their own babies. It free, happened. And free ranging. And free ranging. Not in a, an enclosure. Yep. So we knew this was a possibility, but we were, they were doing such a good job. We're like, we're just gonna let it continue. So that evening, Donna was still unaccounted for. Her six chicks were still unaccounted for. So that's seven birds that I cannot find. And I believe you were home the next day. And so I went to the airport to pick you up. And 
let you know, you know, hey. They, and you had texted me and you had let me know and you showed me pictures of the feathers. Like, right, yeah. yeah. But, you know, just saying, hey, we need to go find the chickens. I said, I'm thinking I'm missing six of them right now. And so we kind of talked about it. And, and as I was doing chores, I noticed that there was um, more feathers and it looked to be again, but it was Betty Jane's feathers. The, she's the, the, the orange yellow yeah, Brahma she, that we have. She's our only buff Brahma that we have. So the, it's very distinctive color. And mm -hmm. so I knew they were hers, but I knew she was okay. And, the, and those feathers were just outside of the original coop mm -hmm. that, we, that we built. So different areas, still kind of on the same side of the property, but pretty far apart. Like, I mean, a decent, a decent distance apart from each other. And so all of that to be said, we were, um, I, as I was walking back and I saw those feathers, I just happened to look down and there was um, a little baby bird, uh, one of the gray chickens that was, had passed away and was laying on the ground, but it looked to have a little bit of damage to it. Yeah, it looked like it had a hole where the lungs would have been or the chest would have been. Mm -hmm. And it didn't look like it was, all the feathers weren't scattered around mm -mm. it, it, it and, just, and the body was still there. So this looked like it was... We thought maybe another bird, like they got into a scuffle or right. something. Another hen got to it, or maybe one of the roosters got to it or yeah. something. It was, it was just very odd, because we, yeah. we had not, up until then, had any issues with any of the babies. The moms were very protective of them, the other hens left them alone. So it was a very odd situation. So. The evening comes by, Nate and I are back. We we get the flashlights out because you have to kind of wait until they're roosting to find out where they're all at. So we're literally in the flashlight trying to count everyone. And I think we found them all, but... We thought that we we, we couldn't find... Donna. Donna and the, and ba the babies. And her babies. Uh, we knew that Karen had lost another that one, one, one. That little gray one that I found. And we found everybody except for Olive or Olivia. Olivia. We couldn't find Olivia. Yep. And so next day comes around. So, so at this point we thought we lost Donna, babies. And Olivia. And Olivia. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then so the next day comes around. And I'm, you're now. Now I'm gone. Now you're <laughs> gone. So I drop you yep. off at the airport and I come back uh, home, and so now I'm doing what Katie does, and I'm counting <laughs> the chickens. And it's a lot easier for me just to take a picture and then count them later. Oh. But as I'm uh, doing that, I'm still feeding, I'm doing chores. And uh, I'm trying to remember kind of the series of events. You're better at storytelling than I do. I, I may be going <laughs> back and forth and correcting myself. You're okay. <laughs> so. Um, and this whole time, we still thought that it was an aerial predator. Yes. So, because we're like, it couldn't be a ground predator because dogs. Right. Dogs have access to all of these areas, and so we're, it's, it's an aerial predator. Okay, so, doing chores, taking a picture of all the animals, so I can do a head count later. And outside of the original coop, there is a massive amount of feathers, like mm -hmm. three times the amount of feathers from what we saw with Donna. And with and the, Betty. And with Betty Jane, mm -hmm. um, the, the buff Brahma. Mm -hmm. A ton of feathers. And I'm like, oh no. So I, because I saw the orange feathers, which were Betty Jane's, mm -hmm. and I couldn't find her, I didn't have her in any of my pictures, I assumed that she had gotten taken. taken. And mind you, she's a she's, buff she's, Brahma. She's, she's a, big, a bird. big bird. She's and the, probably the biggest. She's the biggest hen. of our hens. Yeah. And what is this thing? So we were like, I don't want you. It, it made me really think that we have to have another issue happening because I don't know an aerial predator that could have gotten her because mm. she is so big. At least we've never had that experience. Our biggest, you know one that an aerial predator has gotten was still a pretty small, like the yeah. size of our pullets, yeah. like half the size of our normal hens. Yeah, so Katie had made that transition in her head that it probably wasn't aerial. I'm still thinking it's aerial predator. Mm -hmm. And my neighbors are telling me that they're seeing red-tailed hawks mm -hmm. in the area they have been for the last few days. Um, so I'm thinking it's gonna be a hawk. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm thinking that we lost Betty Jane, the buff Brahma. And at this point, had you found Olivia yet? And I, 
Olivia was, I knew it was safe because when I took a picture, she was there. The two olive acres that we have, the mm -hmm. gray ones, they're right next to each other. I'm like, oh, okay, we, we have <laughs> Olivia and we have um, olive. We're good. So, okay, so I, I'm, I'm doing chores and I run out of feed. So I have to go back into the carport. And as I'm gra grabbing feed, out of like a little hiding space comes Elaine, mm -hmm. which is the black and white daughter of Lucky. Of Lucky, mm -hmm. yes, that's right. Yeah, of mm -hmm. Lucky. And she looks like a zombie from The Walking Dead. Half of her body is gone. Like her entire left breast area is just torn up. Mm -hmm. She has skin hanging out. She has fat hanging out. There's muscle hanging out. She has no feathers. Like she is, she got messed up bad. Mm -hmm. It was awful, awful. And she just looked at me and she just kind of like, help. <laughs> Didn't even try to like run when I tried to pick her up. Mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh. So I picked her up and I immediately uh, sprayed her with red coat. Uh, and it's an antiseptic. And I put her in with the uh, pullets, the Rhode Island red pullets, because they're not using their coop anymore. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to use that coop to isolate her. Mm -hmm. And when... It he isolated her into the coop, not just the right. pullets had no access to her. Mm -hmm. Just right. want to be clear Correct. on that. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's fenced in. She's mm -hmm. in a coop. The pullets are outside of the coop. They don't use that anymore. They're sleeping up in the tree, mm -hmm. uh, the holly bush, the holly tree. Yep. All right. So like, oh my gosh. So I'm glad that now I know where all those feathers came from because they matched mm -hmm. the black and white feathers. But I'm still thinking, why is there the orange feathers yeah. from Betty Jane? I didn't, I forgot that she had, it was a few days before that that we mm -hmm. saw those feathers, or that you did. Yeah. So, continue on with with uh, with chores, and I just, I let Katie know. I was like, hey, I think we lost Betty Jane. I just found um, uh, Elaine, mm -hmm. and not but like five minutes later, I saw Betty Jane in the exact same spot that she was roosting the night before, where we found her in the tree. over in the tree where mm -hmm. the uh, white girls sleep, the tree girls. The tree girls, yep. And I was like, okay, like you, you chill there, that's fine, whatever, thought nothing of it. And a few minutes later, as I'm coming back from the three hoop coop area, uh, she comes running out of the tree line and one of the roosters is trying to, trying to mate with her. And so she just lays down, you know, mating happens. And then after that happens, she doesn't even get up. Like she is just, she has no energy. She has nothing. I walk over to her again. Betty Jane is just like, help. No energy, doesn't even try to move when I pick her up. Mm -hmm. And she, her whole neckline is just torn open. And at this point it's cauterized. So it's not it fresh wounds. Yeah. So, so she had gotten attacked a few nights before that's where all the feathers and came just from. just didn't realize it because and she was accounted know. for. Right, exactly. And, and you couldn't tell just from visual inspection right. from, a, from a distance. But when you're holding her, it's just like the whole neck area is just torn up and all the feathers are missing. So put her in the same coop that Elaine is in. Mm -hmm. So the two of them can have company and they can both be isolated. So uh, sprayed her with red coat also. Well, then I decided that the best things to do is to actually get some antibiotics for her, mm -hmm. for, for the two of them, because I know that the thing that's most likely going to cause harm for them is getting an infection. infection. Right. And there's only so much I can do to keep the wounds from getting infected, I can spray it. But so I actually head to Tractor Supply, needed some stuff anyway, grabbed some uh, oral antibiotics um, and started administering, administering that to them. So... Yep. Meanwhile, I'm texting with my with the neighbor and I'm like, something's getting our chickens. I can't find my trail cam anywhere to yeah. put it up to see what's going on. And she's like, well, we have one. Well, I'll let you guys borrow it. So I put the trail cam up and I also put one of our uh, solar security cameras up. I showed you guys that mm -hmm. on uh, Friday's video. I just completely forgot about like, oh, hey, <laughs> that's yeah. a great option. Yeah. <laughs> It's motion sensitive and everything. Yeah, so. it, worked, it actually worked out really well. So what's been happening is, it wasn't an aerial predator, it was definitely a ground-based predator, mm -hmm. and it was a raccoon. Yep. Oh. 
a raccoon has been taking out our chickens. Yeah. And so over the last few nights, uh, we've been having the trail cam up and the, mm -hmm. and the UFI security camera up. And sure enough, a raccoon comes over, walks into the coop, the original, the mm -hmm. OG coop, and basically just grabs a chicken yeah. and takes off with it and, and kills it. So that's why the chickens have stopped sleeping in the coop, yep. except for two chickens. And Elaine was still sleeping in the coop the night that she got yeah. attacked. And I want to kind of go back a little bit because so Donna and the babies happened earlier. And I think that the like, obviously, I didn't realize it and the dogs didn't realize it. Or it was just I don't know if it was like a whole family of raccoons, if it was a singular raccoon. But Elaine and Betty Jane, I strongly feel that the dogs interrupted it because both both times there was a significant amount of barking. The dogs were up. I could tell exactly what area they were in. And I think that um, the dogs definitely saved Elaine and Betty Jane. Oh, definitely. 100%. Because if yeah, they... We, we heard that early in the morning. Mm-hmm. When I took you to the airport that, that morning. It was like four or five in the morning. Yeah, we it heard was just the dogs not going stop. crazy. And... We didn't get up and investigate because sometimes the dogs just bark. Yeah, but they so were, it, it was, was a, it was a different barking, mm -hmm. but um, it was one of those where, so I do think that um, before people say, oh, your dogs aren't, you know, protecting your flock and stuff, absolutely they are. We've seen them help with aerial predators a lot, and we've also now know that with the ground predators. So I do think that's the only reason that, that Betty Jane and Elaine are still alive is mm -hmm. because the dogs got over there and scared off the raccoons before anything additional happened. Uh, it was just unfortunate because, you know, we do have a large area for them to patrol at night, and they do patrol uh, the other chicken areas where the sheep are and then also this chicken area so i think that perhaps they were a little bit too far away for elaine's case mm -hmm. i think they got betty jane super quick because she wasn't nearly as bad as elaine was yeah so yeah i just wanted to clarify that so now that we know it's a raccoon <clears throat> i'm like all right how am i going to protect the chickens and how am i going to get the raccoon away yep so i um my neighbor mentioned that they had a trap I have a heart trap. And I said, um, no, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stay up in the evening and I'll just, <laughs> I'll just shoot it. <laughs> well, I started thinking about that and it's not really the best option of trying to do a, a live shot in the evening because it's dark. <laughs> I don't have a night scope. We have I just dogs. have a, a regular scope. We have dogs. We have other animals. Like it's just a bad. It's just a bad idea. And plus, if I'm out there, the raccoon may not come out. It's like it's just a bad idea. So I decided to to do the half a heart trap. To do the live trap. To do the live trap. Yep. So the first night, um, didn't trap. Mm -hmm. didn't and catch it. didn't catch it. I actually just used a peanut butter and jelly open face sandwich, and it wasn't enough to <laughs> entice the the raccoon. It smelled it, and they're kind of like, eh. Um, but. We're keeping the we're now keeping all of the coop doors closed like yep. everything's the fences all the fences are on we're keeping the coop doors closed mm -hmm. so the raccoon doesn't have access to the chickens as easily as they did before we even knew as a raccoon right and we weren't closing the coop doors because there was so much movement with all the babies and the moms and stuff and also with how hot it had been. Mm -hmm. Our original coop that we built, we built it for eight birds. There's been about 12 to 14 sleeping in there, which was way too warm. So that's the reason we had been keeping the doors open. Yeah, plus we haven't, we haven't had... We ha yeah, we hadn't had an issue. This is our issue. first issue with, an, with a ground predator. Yeah. So kind of lax on our part too. And you know, that's learning. Right. right, but again, that's, you know, yeah. the dogs, right? Right, exactly. You know, we're like, <laughs> we have dogs, so we're gonna be fine. Yep. So the second night I did get the raccoon. I, I trapped it in the have a heart. I actually just, I used tuna and a half an orange. That it worked, worked <laughs> really, really well. Glad um, I brought that orange home from a work trip. <laughs> <laughs> I ate the other half, it was actually a really good orange too. I was like, man. <laughs> so the hard part about this is what do I do with the raccoon? Yep. You, you guys know that we're both animal lovers and but we also don't want animals hurting our animals right exactly so. so i did a bunch of research and i had a trapped raccoon in the have a heart uh, cage 
and I thought, well, maybe I can rehome it. Maybe I can take it farther on the property, whatever. Well, the wildlife agency of Tennessee, I don't remember exactly what it's called. Uh, first of all, it's illegal for us to rehome an animal, a, a raccoon. Second, they say that it's actually way more inhumane to relocate. Not only does it cause undue hardship on the animal that you've just relocated, because now they have to fight for survival and for food, but you're also introducing that predator into another ecosystem that's kind of already established with mm -hmm. their ecosystem. So you're, you're messing up a new ecosystem, plus you're moving your problem onto somebody else's land or area. Mm -hmm. So it, it had to be dispatched. Yep. And that's what I did. So we then thought the issue was solved. <laughs> We're like, okay, that sucked. Yes. Uh, yeah. But <laughs> chickens are safe. Chickens are safe. We can kind of we're still trying to, you know, we know we have a lot of temporary stuff right now. We're trying to get to a more permanent situation, but mm -hmm. we felt at least everyone had coops, yep. fences. We should be. Yep, raccoon's gone. We should be good. Last night in the trail cam, another Seriously, raccoon. Seriously, another, another raccoon. One. So I think this is going to be a, a, an ongoing problem for a while. Mm -hmm. Family of raccoons. Yep. Um, the one that I caught last night on the trail cam, but not in, in uh, the trap was it seemed to be much bigger mm -hmm. um i actually had the trap set last night but i was actually trying to catch <laughs> a rat <laughs> <laughs> because on the trail cam or actually on the eufy security camera i saw a rat over in the area i'm like oh great now we have rats so mm -hmm. i put uh some ham, ham yep a little slice of ham in the trap and i put it behind or in a in an enclosure where uh, blue used to be behind some chicken netting and I just opened up it enough for a rat to go through to go into the trap to set the tra off, trap off and I could then get rid of the rat. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> well, the rat didn't do that and the, the, raccoon. the raccoon that I saw, on the, it was actually trying to get to it. So we're going to do that again tonight. <laughs> we're going to reset it for a raccoon. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we don't have any, any chickens in that exact right. area. Yeah we they've all been relocated to other safer areas for now well you say relocated they've relocated they, they've, themselves. well they're smart yes. yeah they've, like, they've been relocated yes <laughs> on their own accord. on their own <laughs> well we would have also but yes. yeah we i mean that's the one thing with chickens when they no longer feel safe in an area they're very intuitive to just mm -hmm. move on yeah. so um which is good because we didn't want to continue them using that coop anyway so it'll <laughs> i mean that's the only, I guess, silver lining in the story is that'll give us the opportunity to get that coop out of there. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so they, they're they not in the vicinity. The raccoon clearly knows it's an interested area, so mm -hmm. hopefully we'll be able to catch him tonight, yeah. him or her, and and just unfortunately, you yeah. know, take care of that. Yeah. Because, yeah, we can't have, I mean, that's just, that's awful. I mean, yeah, it's awful for our animals. Mm -hmm. And so that's the story of our, of our chickens. <laughs> Most recent story of our chickens. Yep. Yeah. So, all right. It's, yeah, I mean, I'm just thinking like, it's just, <laughs> we, <laughs> we moved from the suburbs where none of this is an issue because we didn't, like we had dogs and cats. Well, at the very end, we had five chickens. Yeah, okay, but like, you yeah. know, like. Yeah. Very different. We, we had, I had chickens three months of my life out of the 40. <laughs> Some years. 45 years of, of living. And, yeah. you know, and then we come out here and it's like, it's just very different. Yep. It's a very different lifestyle. It is. And you just have to kind of get used to some of those. Yep. Some, some of the of those, unknowns. Some and... of those issues that just come along with it. But yeah. So. Thing. Okay, well, tomorrow we will be back for another Keeping It Kramer. We're going to take you and show you an update on the garden. Uh, things have bloomed quite yeah. a bit. It's pretty cool. And um, show you an update on our <laughs> landscaping because we got a lot done on that. So, cool. some cool stuff. But anyway, thanks for watching. All right. See you on the next one. Bye. Bye.